Hello and welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at the cosine rule. We have four objectives. They are to state the cosine rule, to differentiate between the cosine rule and the cosine ratio, to use the cosine rule to calculate a length and also to use it to calculate the size of an angle. First off, we want to look at what is the cosine rule. Now, especially in trigonometry, because that is where we use it mostly. The cosine rule is a mathematical sentence that connects the three sides of a triangle with an angle. So for example, let's say we wanted to find the length of the side A. Now the length of the side A would be given as A square is equal to B square plus C square minus 2BC cos A. Notice that we start with A, and then we write A in terms of the other two sides, B and C, and the cosine of the angle opposite to A. So we could write this from another side as well, such as C and B. So if we wanted to find C, for example, then we would write C square is equal to B square plus A square minus two, these two sides, B, A, and the cosine of the side opposite to C, which would be this angle here. And we could also write it from B. So the idea is we can use the cosine rule to calculate the length of a side using this formula. We can also use this formula to our equation to calculate the size of an angle. We can modify this so that we can have so that we have this version of it, which is slightly easier to calculate the size of an angle. More on that later on. So, what is the difference between the cosine rule and the cosine ratio? In trigonometry, we have three primary ratios that are sine, cosine, and the tangent. The cosine ratio is defined as the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And that, though, is related only to right angle the triangles. So the cosine ratio is related only to right angle the triangles, while the cosine rule applies to all triangles, including the right angled triangle. Hope that is clear. When do we use it? That is, when do we use the cosine rule? And when do we, um, what do we need to use it? In order to use it, to use the cosine rule, we need two sides and an angle between them. So for example, if we wanted to find AB, we need the other two sides, and we want the angle between them looking exactly like this. If we want to find an angle, we need all three sides of the triangle to be known. So if we want to find AB here, we need to know A and B, and we need to have the angle between them. And if we want to find the sides of an angle, for example, angle A here, we need to know all three sides, A, B, and C. Let's use the cosine rule to calculate um, a length, and let's see how we apply it. So here's a formula. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. So we want to find SW. So we're going to start with SW squared. And SW squared is going to be equal to the other two sides squared, 5 squared plus 9 squared. It kind of looks a bit like um, Pythagoras' theorem, and it actually works a bit like Pythagoras' theorem if you apply it to the right angle triangle. However, it's a much generalized form of um, Pythagoras. So we have five square plus nine square minus two times five times nine cos 52. And once you're here, the primary thing is just to punch this in your calculator, type it in, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. This angle is in degrees. So we have SW square is equal to, once you type that in, 50.6. And then to find SW, since this is the square, we say SW is equal to the square root of 50.6. And that, of course, gives us 7.1 centimeters. So SW here would be 7.1 centimeters. That's how we use the cosine rule to calculate a length. Now let's see how we can use it to calculate um, the size of an angle. 
Here we have a triangle x, y, z, and we want to find the size of angle x here. We can write the formula in the same way. a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a to mean here. 25, since this is opposite to that, so 25 squared is equal to 16 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 16 times 13 cosine of the angle x. And once we're here, we can do a little bit of transpo transposing. So we have 25 squared minus 16 squared minus 13 squared, and that would be equal to minus 2 times 16 times 13 cos x. All of this over here works out to 200 is equal to negative 416 cos x. And we can find our cos x now by saying is equal to 200 divided by negative 416. And of course, x itself, the angle, is equal to the cos inverse of 200 over negative 416. That gives us the cos inverse, if you want it in decimal, negative 0 0.481, which is equal to 118.6 degrees. That is the size of x. If you wanted to use it in this version, then we would have that simply a, or in this case, x, let me use a different ink for that, x is equal to the cos inverse of b square, which is 16 plus 13, that's there, 16 square plus 13, let me just fix that a little bit, that's a bit, bit messy there, all right, so we're back, 16 square plus 13 square minus 2, minus um, a square, which is 25 square, all over 2 times 16 times 13. And you're working it like this, we get the cos inverse of negative 200 over 416, which leads us right back to here. And once we punch that into our calculator, remember your calculator needs to be in degree mode, then we end up with 118. Point six degrees. So that is how we use it to calculate the size of an angle. You can use the, the cosine rule as is. It's a bit longer, well, it's a lot longer to use it as is, or if you want to use it in this modified form to find the angle. Either way, well, you, knowing it this way would mean that you only need to know one formula. It, it should be on the CSEC formula sheet. Um, this version of it would not be. So having it in this form, then you would just use it as is and you would find your angle. Or if you want to memorize another formula, this one looks shorter. It would be up to you as to what you would want to do there. But that's how we use it to find the length of a side and the size of an angle. Remember, to find a side, you need to know two of the sides and the angle between them. And to find a side, you need to know all three sides. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. You can find more practice papers, past papers and solutions on the website at czekmathtutor.com. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then please remember to subscribe before you go. Continue to work hard and best wishes in your exams.